29-year-old who lives in Russia who is a wheelchair user. Left unable to walk after a car accident, Yudin found himself dependent on his brother for his livelihood. Living on the third floor, Yudin's apartment denied any accommodation for wheelchair users. With very little entertainment due to his immobility, Yudin started brainstorming ideas to resume his social life. As an electrician by profession, Yudin started to build a solar-powered elevator for his wheelchair for him to get to the ground floor to the third floor. The elevator is a standard wheelchair harnessed by a sack, which is essentially made of belts. The elevator is very similar to the stork delivering a baby with a, like a sack. So to get into his room, he first has to lift himself up to the third floor and then swing himself into his room, which is really, really unsafe. But his story was applauded for his creativity, imagination, and master innovation. It was supposed to be a feel-good story. But this shouldn't be a feel-good story. Alexander's apartment lacked the necessary infrastructure to let him simply live his life. And he did not have a wheelchair that allowed him to navigate up and down the stairs. But changing the entire building's infrastructure can be really expensive. Adding ramps, elevators, large doors, and large stairs is often expensive, and there doesn't seem to be an alternative for that. What Alexander could have used was an all-purpose wheelchair, a wheelchair that would assist him to navigate up and down the stairs, or on rough terrain, old infrastructure, or move around in small bathrooms with increased ability, or just simply to cook for himself. Imagine being without these functions. Reaching the top cabinet is nearly impossible. Going to the beach, not a chance, as wheels don't move in sand. And to self-navigate wheelchairs, one must use their hands and like, use the rings around the wheels, which touches the ground, which is in no way sanitary. But an all-purpose wheelchair is extremely expensive. They can cost up to $1,000 to $10,000. And this financial cost itself prevents many people from simply living their life independently. So I have always seen my father on crutches, and I remember the first time we went to the beach. I was super excited. I got my toys, my games, and I really wanted to share this experience together. But as I saw my father on the beach wheelchair, I was terrified. Beach wheelchairs are essentially like rolling carts on inflated wheels. And as I was only four years old, my mom was the only one who could help my dad navigate through the sand. But again, changing all the infrastructure in the world is close to impossible because, first of all, it's way too expensive. In the United States, there are still some laws that make many infrastructure wheelchair accessible, but it's still inadequate and most wheelchair users are forced to find alternatives which are not necessarily safe, just like Alexander Yudin's. But the standard wheelchair we have today is a low-cost, valid option, but still the wheelchair users are unable to live their life fully independently. So again, a solution for this to is to create new infrastructure, new stairs, new roads, new curves, and all the shelves must start getting shorter. Imagine how expensive that would be. Imagine telling people to fix all old and new infrastructure for people that make up almost 1% of the population. In the world of a capitalist and popular society, it would be very difficult to convince anyone to spend money on changing infrastructure. So, a way to solve this problem is to have an economical, sustainable, and independently usable wheelchair, the all-purpose wheelchair. This can climb stairs, go on rough terrain, self-elevate, and stay sanitary. And this wheelchair is entirely mechanical to reduce cost 
and to make the wheelchair portable. So this wheelchair essentially gives back the independence that many wheelchair users either lost or never had. But this wheelchair does not exist yet. I've always wanted to build prototypes based on my father's experiences. Like I would see him try to reach for cups for water in like the top shelf, and although sometimes he would be able to do it, it would be incredibly unsafe. So in 2020, I created a small prototype using the property of water being incompressible and basically a hydraulic. And so this modification helped the users to significantly higher heights than using regular wheelchairs. And last year, while reading about war artillery, I thought, why not put the continuous track on a wheelchair wheels, and thus enabling my wheelchair to be all-terrain, which can also go up and down stairs. So this continuous track is essentially the wheel and link of the army tank. And as the pandemic began, cleanliness became very important to us as a family, and especially with my father self-driving his wheelchair. We were wondering how can we maintain this sanit uh, cleanliness. So I contacted Professor Liz Zhao Wexler at UIUC to understand her design on lean to steer, self-balancing ball-based wheelchair. And so then through after many designs and sketches, I made a gear and lever system where the gear was used on the wheels and the lever enabled the user to navigate the wheelchair with their hands but far from the wheels. So this prototype I patented, provisionally patented in 2021, and I hope to patent by 2023. Through my efforts, I'm trying to cover a selected group of people for those who are mobility challenged. Because there are so many other challenges and other technology devices that are still not accessible to everyone. And a way to implement this cheaper and more accessible way to give back assistive technology is to spread and begin communication with the technology industries and uh, corporations. Last year, I spoke with 20 or so assistive technology corporate companies at the Global Accessibility Awareness Day conference about creating cost-effective solutions for the physically challenged community. The global support for assistive technology is one of the first, take we, first steps we can take to make a more equal society for the wheelchair community. And in 2018, I started writing my wheelchair travel blog, Twisha's Travel Diary, where I highlight wheelchair accessibility challenges in our family travels. And I hope to inspire other people who are also wheelchair users to go out and travel. This platform allow, allows people from all over the world to share their own wheelchair journeys through my blog. I give an option of a wheelchair accessibility rating where one would be not accessible at all and three would be extremely accessible. And my articles were published in the local newspaper, the Tri-City Voice, and I was able to reach my county through my work. And as astonishing as it sounds, my hopes are that one day we don't need such a platform to share wheelchair accessible challenges, as all the problems should be overcome with assistive wheelchair technology. But what can we do? The first steps towards innovation and equality is awareness. And awareness begins from very childhood. In 2021, I illustrated an authored book called The Shortest House on the Block. The book is basically about the daily life of a child who is in a wheelchair and the awareness around wheelchair accessibility. The book is available on Amazon and I use the money to work towards building newer prototypes and on my projects. So we need to br work towards bringing awareness on ableism to technology companies and corporations because there will be a day where Yusuf can enter his apartment building through his front door after climbing three flights of stairs. There will be a day where we can enjoy the beach as a family and share the experience together. There will be a day where someone who is in a wheelchair can travel the Great Wall of China or any ancient cobbled streets without any third party assistance. That day is not today, but that day will come. Thank you.